Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're watching. The channel's called Ratchet. My name's Andrew, and on this episode, we start tackling some of the details that are going to take this build to the next level. Run the title. Welcome to the channel if you're new. If you're not, thank you for tuning back in. Make sure you click on the playlist up in the top right hand corner of the screen and that will take you to all of the previous episodes that I've released on this build so you can get yourself up to speed. Make sure you hit the subscribe button below so you don't miss any future content that I do release. Um, you can also follow me on Instagram, uh, RatchetGT40, to keep up to date with more regular photographic progress. On this episode, I'm going to be starting on some of the finer details of this build, which I'm hoping is going to take it, like I mentioned, to the, to the next level. I mentioned a couple of videos ago that I wasn't particularly happy with how the fuel tanks were mounted and the fact I wanted to do something about it. So let me show you what's going on. So the standard fixing for the fuel tanks is a pair of brackets, one at the front and one at the rear of the fuel tank, which is which is fine, but you can't get to those once the top seal panel is bonded and riveted in place. Now, I can't really think of a, a reason why you'd need to drop the tank very often, but on the time that you do need to, um, it becomes quite a problem as you have to strip off this top panel. So what a few people have done was to have the tank fitted in place with uh, tank straps. So I'm gonna have three along the length of each tank. So I very simply made up a cardboard template showing how it will fix in between the run of rivets, run underneath and then fix to the chassis. So these will be mounted with a two M5 bolts above and below and that should provide more than adequate support for the fuel tank. One thing I will mention is this foam that's been stuck to the top of the tank, I will be removing. I'm not quite sure of its purpose, to be honest. I can only think it's to maybe cut down on the noise of the petrol sloshing around in the tank, but it's not something you would ever hear over the noise of the engine. So this will get removed and then um, the tank cleaned up. I picked up some three mil aluminium plate from the metal stockist because I thought that would be a good thickness to make these straps out of. And as a tester, I did just rip down a strip um, just to see how it did look and work. And that, that would have looked absolutely fine, but it looked fairly plain and boring, to be honest. So I refined the design slightly and came up with this, got it drilled and everything and then offered it into place which I must admit I do like this design although it's never going to be seen I think it looks quite smart in true here's one I made earlier fashion I've already um, progressed the driver's side and got the tank straps finished up and uh, mopped into place so let me show you how they look and here they are so they've been DA'd and then rubbed back with a scotch sprite but I think for something that's never going to be seen, I think they look quite smart. I'm waiting for some eight mil rubber to turn up so it gives the tank something to sit on. What I may also do, and I think what some people have done, is wrap the, um, the inner face of this strap in some rubber, uh, some very thin rubber to stop any chafing. I like them. I like them a lot. Another job that I got ticked off of the list, which was uh, a nice one to get done, was the fuel sender access cover. Um, so in the outer sill, there was a small circular disc, which you then took off, which exposed the top of the petrol tank. And in on top of that was then the actual fuel sender unit, which you un unbolted and removed it from the tank. Now, I wanted to do something a little bit more um, authentic looking, because now my seals are going to be exposed you're going to see that cover so looking back over old pictures of 40s the sender unit would actually sit on top of the tank which was visible from inside the car so i understand i think that's how it worked so they used a sort of a, a lozenge shape 
cover. So what I did do, you wouldn't believe the amount of thought that went into this tiny little piece, uh, size, location, number of fixings, all of that sort of rubbish. But this is basically what I've ended up with. So it's made out of three mil alley. Because it's surface mounted, I wanted to give the material a bit of thickness and give it a bit of projection off of the top of the sill. I could have made it out of 1.2 mil and uh, put a bead roll around the perimeter and have it flush, but I wanted to have it surface mounted and it's standing proud. Now I'm thinking about using some um, Allen head bolts on top of that to again further give it a bit more uh, of, a, of, of a relief against the, uh, against the outer seal. So that's basically what it looked like. And then underneath here, there's just the circular hole to access the fuel sender in the petrol tank underneath. So both the passenger and driver sides have been done. And again, same finish that I'll be running through on everything else. Now I'm hoping it's gonna be details like this that are gonna help sort of elevate this car to a, to a new level. So fingers crossed, I'll keep up with this level of work and um, yeah, I'll end up with something that I'm proud of. On to the next job on the list, which was buy a new battery because I used the battery that came in the car in another car. Um, so go and pick up a new battery and then start fabricating up a new battery box stroke housing stroke bracket um, to hide it underneath the panelling on the passenger side. So as always, it was make it up as I go along, but basically in essence, the battery fits under this lip and then there's just a very simple um, bracket on the other side. The thing's bolted into the car uh, four points and yeah, it does the job. So let me show you what it looks like in situ. So this is the battery cradle, let's call it, in place. Total disclosure, it's a bit of a pain in the backside to get to that bracket just there, just from the top. Bearing in mind, obviously the outer sill is going to be on preventing any access from the front. So what I now want to do is um, put the top panel back on and start working out the access cover panel that I want to cut into the top of the main um, chassis panel, which I'm then going to bead roll a step into so the cover fits flush with the top of the panel. So what I did with some masking tape was make the hole as small as possible, um, but still be able to get the battery out. Now, what I need to remember, and the reason I'm telling you guys, just in case I forget, is this is the absolute smallest this hole can be. So what I'm going to need to do is offset back my actual, um, point where I start to bead roll. So this will this will be all the same level, then it will step down um, a millimeter and then come in because I need to have the stepped lip to then fix my riv nuts into so I can then sit my panel on the top. So I've got the edges marked out on the back side of the panel. Uh, the red lines are the tape markings and then I've offset eight mil um, and drawn those purple lines. And the purple line is going to be the line that I um, bead roll. So here is my bead roller. I had it literally five minutes before I chopped the crank handle off um, and then made an adapter plate to fit a wheel which I had lying around. And that basically means that I have far more control um, when putting a piece through the die than I would trying to crank a handle and slightly overextending my arm, which kind of dragged the piece um, slightly offline. So by adding 
this wheel, I've got far more control feeding the piece through the die. I've only ever, um, you know, done sort of muck around test pieces with this. So this panel is going to be my first proper um, piece that I'm going to have used uh, the bead roller for. The problem that I run into straight away is because I've put the return lips in this panel, I can't run it through the bead roller as you would normally. So you can run that piece through there, but you go to turn and the return lip obviously hits the framework of the bead roller. So what I'm going to need to do is bead roll two sides and then move the top die to the outside of the bottom die so I can then form the mirrored step that I need. So it's a massive lesson learned that any piece that I'm going to have some sort of relief put into for, a, for an access panel, I need to roll that straight away so I don't run into this problem again. So what I've worked out is where I start to feel pressure on the, um, on the, on the top roller, which is about one o'clock position. I then give it another turn and a quarter, and then that gives me the depth I need on the, um, on the dies to form the step. So what I'm going to have to do now is actually cut out the center um, so I can then get the joggler in and do the last piece across here. Right, so I've got the center cut out. I've started to uh, just dress the edges, get those um, smartened up a little bit. So basically the, the plan for the next few stages is just to try and improve the uh, finish of this panel so that's not going to be overly interesting watching me just filing and sanding so I will check back in with you when I've managed to save this piece so a new day and uh, another hour or so spent on the panel covering the battery once I've got the main portion of the panel to a stage that I was happy with I then made a cardboard template for the actual cover, the battery cover. Um, cut that out of some aluminium, got it shaped up nicely. And now I've got everything into position. So I've finally got something worth showing you. I'm really happy with it. It's, it's as simple as that. I'll stick up a photo now showing you with the, with the lid off. The time that needs to be spent on each panel to keep it in this raw state is, is quite amusing just trying to get all of the imperfections out of the panel, it'd be so much easier if I could just hit it with some filler primer and then spray it black. But that isn't the plan. But along this back edge, the top fold line is a lot crisper than it was. And it, likewise, this return lip over the side of the chassis has been tidied up a heck of a lot. Because the matte white protection film just masks a, a multitude of sins, it's not until you remove that you can really see what you're working with. I don't feel it's above my skill level at the moment to make every panel like this. Now a real craftsperson would look at this and, and probably shoot it to pieces, but 
you know, I can I can say hand on heart, I made this. And um, I think that's what it's all about at the end of the day. So that basically wraps up this episode, which, as always, I think has been a fairly productive one. Although there are only little jobs, they still need to be done, still need to be ticked off the list. So it's all forward steps. Make sure you hit the like button, uh, leave a comment below. I always do uh, enjoy reading what you think about the progress on the car, think about the quality of the videos. Um, any feedback is, uh, is always taken on board. You can follow me on Instagram, RatchetGT40, for more regular updates on there. Coming up in the next episode, I think things are going to get a bit more drastic. I'm going to start looking at the fitment of the spider. That should be a fun one. Not quite sure how it's going to pan out. So until then, I will catch you next time.